What's up, guys, and welcome to One Take. Tonight, we are talking about the new show on FX and Hulu called Devs. We'll be discussing episode one, which we just watched. I'm Gil, and I'm here with my brother, Alun. Yo. Alun, first thing I want to say about this show is I can't believe we missed that it was premiering. Because you and I, even if you don't know it, are big fans of Alex Garland. He wrote one of your favorite movies of all time. You know what movie I'm talking about? Yes. Ex Machina. Uh, that's not what I was talking about, but that's Source true. Code. No, that was uh, Duncan Jones. <laughs> I'm talking about 28 Days Later. Ah, I he do wrote love 20... that movie. It's an awesome movie. He wrote 28 Days Later... And he uh, he was a writer, but he made his directorial debut with Ex Machina a few years ago, which he also wrote. He also wrote and directed Annihilation with Natalie Portman. So this guy's awesome. You and I are both big fans of sci-fi. I'd heard a while ago that he was writing and directing a new limited series, and it dropped off my radar. I totally forgot about it. And then found out that two episodes of Devs have aired. So you and I are correcting that mistake. We watched episode one. We're going to talk about that tonight, and we're going to catch up for episode, and we're going to catch up for episode three, which airs in a couple of days. By the way, before we jump into the episode, I want to say that Alex Garland is not just the showrunner for Devs, but he's actually written and directed every episode, which is unusual for a TV show. Most shows. Each episode is written, directed by somebody different, but it's becoming a trend lately where somebody will write and direct an entire series. Twin Peaks was a great recent example of that. David Lynch directed all 18 episodes of that. So I love this trend. I think you get more creative, more interesting shows when it's done this way. And at least so far, that seems to be panning out with devs. Before we get into the specifics of episode one, Alon, what are your overall thoughts on the show so far, having seen the first episode? I love the concept, and I love the execution so far. I think that the mystery elements behind it, they're done in a way where the characters are right there with us. They, we, they don't know what we don't know. So, so far, I, I love the, the direction and the way they're handling everything. Yeah, a lot of shows these days use that mystery box approach. I'm thinking about Watchmen. I'm thinking of Westworld, where there's some central mystery and the show in an excruciatingly slow-paced manner doles out information to you. But it feels like they cheat sometimes, right? Sometimes there's a mystery only because the camera wasn't pointing the right direction. The characters know what goes on, but you don't. In this show, there's a mystery, but I felt like I was right there with Sergey, with Lily, and it felt like I, I trust Alex Garland, so I trust that he's going to bring those answers in a way that's satisfying, and I trust that there is an answer. So in everything you said, I love the ideas this show is wrestling with. It's smart sci-fi. The mystery is interesting. I thought pretty much across the board, the acting was great. The characters are complex. They're interesting. I love this show, and I hope it keeps up the quality after episode one. So let's jump into some of the main things that happened in episode one. First off, Sergey is killed in the first episode. So were you like me where I thought he was going to be the main character and then the show kind of pulled the rug out from under me? Yeah. I mean, this has happened so many times that I'm not taken aback the way I used to be by it, but I don't think I was expecting it. And it, I, I, I still like when they do it, but... <laughs> can't say I was like super surprised by it. And we can't point. give examples, right? Because if we give examples of when this has happened, we're spoiling that show or that movie. But it feels like this sort of thing is happening more and more lately where they introduce somebody, you think they're the main character, then they get killed and it's shocking and it's crazy. Um, but it, it worked on me here and they didn't really play it up as a big shock anyway. It wasn't like it was a huge twist. It was just a tough moment in the show and uh, I thought it worked really well and by the way right before it happened when Nick Offerman's character Forrest stopped Sergey 
Did you think he was going to kill him? Or what did you think was going on there? Uh, I mean, I didn't understand exactly why he was there. But as soon as he started explaining, like, this isn't your fault, but you did steal some material. I'm like, okay, he's done <laughs> at that point. He was it just took- way, he was just being way too understanding that there's right. no way that was going to end well. <laughs> it took me a little while to get there because when he started to talk about how everything is predetermined, we you had no choice. In my mind, I thought that what he was saying was we knew you were going to do this. And this was part of this was part of the plan. We brought you on. We knew you were going to steal some stuff. And then he said, "You understand what this is? This is absolution." And in my head, I was so dumb. I thought he was saying I'm forgiving you. I knew this was going to happen. And then <laughs> I saw how nervous Sergey was. I was like, dude, calm down. You're fine. <laughs> and then, I, yeah, I like how when Sergey started running, the guy that was going to kill, kill him happened to be behind a tree on his exact path. Right, right. And I don't think it was an accident, <laughs> right? Part of the part of what we saw earlier in the episode was the concept of predicting an organism's movements. True so that. I don't know if it's a literal connection but uh, I, I definitely made that connection that they seem... So when, when Nick Offerman was saying all this stuff, how it's predetermined, I initially interpreted that as him saying, we calculated your exact movements. We knew what you were going to do. But in retrospect, I don't think he meant that. I think he was speaking very philosophically that the world is predetermined, but I don't think he was necessarily saying we have the ability to see that path. Because if they could see the path, why would he bring him on to the devs team just so he could steal his stuff and then have to kill him? Because that wouldn't really make sense. his own path is set. <laughs> and even if he's aware of it, maybe he can't change it. Maybe. I mean, I'm sure we're going to get into that territory, that, that sort of mind-bending, confusing territory. Yeah. My, explain, some, explain something to me real quick, if you don't mind. Sure. How... What I didn't really notice him stealing data with his watch. I saw him playing with it at one point. Did did, did he do something that made it obvious what he was doing? No, I don't think so. I thought that was... Uh, I don't think they showed to us that he was stealing data. That was a surprise to me when Nick Offerman stopped him, and I think it was meant to be a surprise for us. You yeah, do thought- see him at one point look at his watch and kind of flick it, but I didn't know what he was doing there. Yeah, I thought maybe... Maybe in that building there was something weird happening with time that he was noticing, or I mean, I guess I was completely off base with that thought, but it seemed pretty cool in the moment. That's exactly what I thought too. I mean, this show has me constantly looking for something weird happening, and so as soon as I saw his watch, I was like, "Time travel? Is it time travel? Is that what they're doing in there?" Yeah, I thought maybe time like stayed completely still while he's in the building or something, but right. Guess not. <laughs> nope. He was just on his first day stealing stuff, stealing well, information after basically being warned. True. It was predetermined. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to start using that excuse. Anything I do, something bad. <laughs> <laughs> just, just launch into Nick Offerman's speech. The world is predetermined. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Events cause are caused by previous things. <laughs> like, how does oh, it go well, again? In that case, you're not under arrest. You're free to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like we said, I loved. I mean, when when we're following Sergey as he's walking into the building, I was so on the edge of my seat. Nick Offerman's asking him to guess. What do we do in the dev section? And then as a viewer, I start to guess. And I, I, I was just on the edge of my seat waiting to see what's in the devs building. You know, I used the term earlier, the mystery box show. This show, there's literally a big box. And it's a mystery <laughs> what's in there. And I love that we actually saw what's in there. But it's so complicated and it's such advanced technology that we still don't know what the hell it is. The best we can do is at least see that it's something insane and something shocking by Sergey's reaction to what he saw on the screen. Uh, and by the way, so Alun, I know we have very little to go on, but any theories, right? We saw a bunch of code. Sergey looks at the code and he basically asks, is this real or is this theoretical? Have you actually run experiments? 
we're told everything is here, everything here is real. And then he seems very disturbed by that. He vomits. He feels like he needs to steal that information. I'm assuming that's what triggered it. So any theories as to what he discovered in Devs? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a set theory, but a few thoughts went through my head. Maybe the world's a simulation and they're aware of it and they're learning how to control things within it. Maybe it's not a simulation, but they have computers, so they have technology so advanced that they'll be able to predict the future of advanced organisms such as humans. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think it must have something to do with those considering yeah. they were exploring that in the show. But well, I think it's I think you? it's pretty telling that you and I had the exact same theory <laughs> because that was my first thought is that somehow they were able to prove that we live in a simulation and that's what was so shocking to Sergey. None of this is real. We're basically in the matrix. I don't think it's the latter. I don't think they're able to predict behavior for advanced creatures. And the reason I say that is because Sergey earlier in the episode was barely able to predict for 30 seconds what the simplest organism they could find was able to do. And I guess it's possible that they have more advanced technology in devs. And maybe once someone like Sergey is able to crack the code and predict behavior for a simple organism, that's kind of the test where they say, okay, you predicted the behavior for a simple organism. That means you're ready to see what we've already done, which is we're on the brink of predicting behavior for humans and perhaps even more advanced creatures. So that's a possibility, but, and actually, as I'm describing it, I've sort of talked myself into saying, you know what, that actually sounds like a pretty legit possibility. So, <laughs> so I don't really know. Uh, I think it has something to do with the nature of reality, though, whatever, whatever it ends up being. Any other thoughts on uh, Sergey? Because this is it's basically what we're talking about here is shortly before he is suffocated. Yeah. Um, I think the nature of his, you know, his fake death is really interesting. I'm wondering what, who set himself on fire there? You know, what, what, was he a clone? Was it not him at all? I feel like there's some sort of technology-based scientific explanation for it. Like, maybe it really was him, but I, I don't know. There's something weird with, with that, the his fake death there. Right. What's funny is that you and I both were thinking the same thing, which is how did they get this footage? I was thinking, did they reanimate his corpse somehow? He was walking in a way that seemed like he was totally unconscious, right? He was walking very deliberately. That's kind of how Lily described it. So I thought maybe they were able to control his body like a puppet on a string. He wasn't really alive at that point. Um, but if they have technology that advanced, couldn't they just fake the footage and then throw a burned body over there? Yeah, I mean, that's that's my other thought. But what I'm wondering is, I don't, from what I've seen so far, there's no reason for me to think that they have connections in the government or the police department that can, like, be in on this. I mean, they called the cops in, earlier in the episode when Sergei went missing. It seemed like they were legitimate cops. They weren't working for them. So I imagine somebody's investigating his death you know, at the right. burn site. So unless they have connections to the police and they control them, uh, you know, what, what's the explanation going to be there with the, you know, the, the DNA test or whatever they do. Right. Right. Well, I do think it's his body, but to your point, if they start to investigate this, some footage might not be enough. There might be inconsistencies where they don't see the right, I don't know, footsteps or something. So maybe there is an interesting explanation there. They did make reference earlier in the episode when Sergey was showing them predict the movements of that worm. He did mention multiple realities. Maybe that's part of what they're working on is something to do with the multiverse. And maybe they have footage of another Sergey in another universe where he burned his body, burned himself alive. And maybe, and, and uh, Forrest said he, he didn't care much for the multiverse theory, but maybe 
maybe he really does care for it. Yeah. And this is, by the way, why I love this show. You and I, in the last 10 minutes, have already discussed time travel. We've discussed <laughs> the multiverse. It's so cool. Like, these are my favorite concepts. And it's, it really it's all is. wrapped in an awesome story. It's so rare that we get a sci-fi show that we're actually into. And I'm hoping the quality stays to this level. Yeah. <laughs> It'll suck if you and I go watch episode two tonight. And we're like, well, this show's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That would be very disappointing. <laughs> uh, one more thought on Sergey. When he went to the bathroom to throw up, he had his hands all over that toilet. Oh, yeah. And then immediately puts his hand to his face and he's drinking water out of his hand. And I get it. You're, you're not in your right mind. You're about to vomit. But don't put your hand on the toilet, especially with you know coronavirus what, though? going around. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> You know what, though? That bathroom looked so clean. I think that building, <laughs> I think there's some technology there that keeps it germ-free. <laughs> he, uh, his hands are cleaner now that they've touched that toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was odd you had to close the lid of the toilet before you could flush it. Well, how do you know he had to close the lid? Well, didn't it? I think when he closed the lid, it looked like the button to flush was behind where the <laughs> lid was. Oh, I don't know. I, got, I have to go we'll back have to and watch that. that. Yeah. Wow. So they've got advanced toilet technology. Larry David. Would yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there were no planks. You know, it could go all over the place. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, let's talk about <laughs> Lily. Uh, so Lily, she was in the episode up until this point, but once Sergey is killed, she becomes the main focus of the show. And by the way, she's played by an actress named Sonoya Mizuno, and you've seen her before. I'm wondering if you recognized her. No. Remember in Ex Machina when Oscar Isaac has that awesome impromptu oh. dance number? Yeah. Yeah, this is her. Oh, my God. Huh. <laughs> and that was maybe the best scene in Ex Machina. It was awesome. Uh, so I think she is she's an incredible actress. I think this character is awesome. She's super interesting. And she's a smart character. And it's so much fun to watch this mystery when it's being attacked by a competent character. Unlike shows like Lost, where there's this big mystery, but you feel like you're watching a bunch of dopes run around, try to figure <laughs> it out, and it's super frustrating. So here, she's this great character. She's smart. And I have a feeling that she's going to be pretty formidable when it comes to her facing off against Nick Offerman's character. Yeah, I feel if we saw the same situation in another show, her character would see that video of Ser Sergei uh, burning himself and just be 100% convinced that was him and there's nothing more to it. You know? Right. Like, but she's like, there was something odd about it. Yeah. Yeah, they would they would try to create a plot out of her being feeling betrayed by Sergey. How could he do this? And then meanwhile, we'd be getting so frustrated watching it, being like, "Lily, you dope. Sergey would never do that." But instead, Lily's the one saying Sergey would never do that. It's great. Yeah, it reminds me of that scene in The Simpsons where Mr. Burns is trying to get Bart to believe his family doesn't want him anymore, so he hired an <laughs> actor to play Homer, and Homer's like, "Don't." Oh, and Barch is <laughs> like, right. that's them, all right. <laughs> that is exactly what we're talking about here. That's, that's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> um, I thought that when she, I will say though, when she saw, um, when she saw Sergey's body burned, the torture and the pain in her face when she's screaming was was super intense, and she did a great job of selling that. So. I was surprised to find out that she was the main character, but not at all disappointed. I think she's going to be a great character to follow here. Um, when she goes to her ex-boyfriend to ask for help to crack the code on that Sudoku app, um, I found it kind of funny that we're dealing with these big sci-fi ideas, these big philosophical issues, but we still have these petty issues like an ex-boyfriend that felt betrayed by her and doesn't want to help her because he doesn't like the way that things ended. But I got invested in, I mean, I'm invested in her character. You know, I, I could feel the awkwardness of dealing with that guy when she's asking him for help. 
But um, I don't know. I feel like I'm just kind of stream of consciousness talking about how great her character is. Um, but it's tough because the most sort of interesting aspects of this episode when it comes to the overarching plot development happened with the Sergei character. So I don't know, Alon, what else do you have to say about, about Lily and her uh, part of the plot? I thought she was great. I'm really looking forward to seeing the way she reverse engineers what's happened thus far and looking forward to her uncovering what's going on in that building because I want to know what's going on in that building. Yeah. <laughs> how is she going to crack the code of the Sudoku app? You're a tech guy, Alon. How do you, how do you <laughs> figure out a password? Well, you can't brute force it because she's only got two more attempts there. And I don't know. <laughs> I, I need to know this, Alon. <laughs> I have... Uh... <laughs> I'm kind of surprised she needed help from anyone else. It seems like she has a thorough understanding of encryption and security. Yeah, well, that's that's part of what makes her character so great is that she's competent, but she's not all powerful. You know, like uh, Ray from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> not to yeah. dig into that whole thing. <laughs> I think Ray's a great character. I love her character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, Forrest, Nick Offerman's character. Uh, what an interesting character because I kind of like him at first. And then by the end of the episode, I think, wow, he's kind of evil. And this one scene in particular that stands out to me when he's talking to Katie, the, um, the, the blonde woman that he works with. And Forrest is clearly very upset about having had to kill... Uh, Sergey. I mean, he looks like he was crying almost when he was uh, when he was sitting down and Katie approaches him and he talks about how difficult it is. And he says it shouldn't be. Basically, he's saying that the world is a cold, predeterministic place. Humans are nothing special. Why should I feel bad about killing someone? And Katie says it's hard to unlearn a lifetime of emotion or something along those lines. So it's really interesting to watch these two characters try very hard, essentially, to not be human. And it seems like Katie's doing a much better job of it than Forrest. And it makes me wonder if at some point this season, we're going to see Forrest betray their cause. Because it doesn't seem like he's... It seems like logically he's all in on this cold, deterministic reality but emotionally, he still feels maybe more than Katie does. You know, it's kind of odd to say this, but for all we know, in this world, maybe he's not evil. And we literally just don't understand what he currently understands. It, it, I, we might learn something that changes our view of him. Right. We Yeah, that's a good point. And I mean, I think that Alex Garland, I think, is is trying to wrestle with real ideas. So I think by the end of the season, his hope is that we're going to be questioning our own reality. So we'll see if that happens. Maybe Forrest did prove that we live in a simulation, and maybe someone's going to turn it off. So he's trying to save uh, all of reality. Uh, yeah. You know, you know who I want to see a lot more of? Who? That guy that smiled at Sergey. Remember? Oh, the no. Are you talking about the homeless guy who lives on their uh, no, their no, porch? no, no, no. <laughs> when, when he was when he was in that building, sitting at his desk, the guy sitting like oh, like, that's right, diagonally across from him, just like looked at him and gave him a quick smirk. <laughs> Didn't he kind of laugh too? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about that character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Um, Alun. What's with that giant girl statue? I, <laughs> I have no clue, man. <laughs> I, so I was thinking about it, and we don't really know anything about this company. I think it's called Amaya, I think is the name yeah. of the company. All we've seen is research. We've seen that they're trying to predict the movements of a biological creature. But I'm assuming there's got to be some real-world applications of what they do. I'm assuming they sell something and somehow bring money in. So it made me wonder, what is their real world brand? And what would the brand be if your logo is a giant girl? So my thought is maybe they do something to promote 
life. There was a lot of footage of children, so maybe they help. I don't know if you're having cloning or if you're having trouble conceiving a child that they can somehow uh, create a being for you or maybe genetic engineering where they make sure your child is born, you know, disease free, uh, has the best genetics. So that's where my mind went. Maybe that's their real world application, but I'm assuming we'll learn more about that, uh, you know, over time. Prediction in the real world, anyone can create a simulation in this. There's a little girl in the real world that created this entire simulation that these, and these people are living in. So that's so just that, a giant statue of herself that she coded <laughs> into it. So that girl is basically their God. Yeah. But it seems like they don't necessarily realize that. All right. We'll see. I wouldn't put anything past this show at this point. Anything's <laughs> up. Anything's, anything's possible at this point. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is the score. Uh, the The music in this show is awesome. It's super unique. I'm not a music guy, so I'm going to do my best to describe what I hear. To me, it sounds a little bit jazzy, like the kind of jazz you would hear in a noir, mixed with this sort of church choir. So to me, it creates this feeling of uneasiness mixed with almost religion level of importance. Like we are dealing with big, big stuff. Whatever's in that box has something to do with the nature of reality. We're dealing with big, big ideas. And I think the music sells that. And it just underscores this feeling of unease and discomfort throughout the episode. So I thought the score was worth shouting out here. Yeah, and I remember I loved the music in Ex Machina as well. So... I think Alex has Alex Garland has good taste. Absolutely. Alon, any other final thoughts on episode one of Devs? Uh, no, except I haven't been this excited for a show in a while, to be honest. And I'm, I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, same here. I am totally blown away by this show. It's, it's, I'm almost glad I forgot it was coming out so I didn't have to wait and be hyped for it. I just find out about it. I see that two episodes have already dropped, and it turns out the show is awesome. So can't wait to see what happens next. Can't wait for episode two. So until next time, thanks for watching this video. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video, and that'll be very soon because we'll be putting up a reaction for episode two and we'll be keeping up with this show for the rest of the season. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one take.